Today we're going to see how Hollywood does simulating real violence. One of our viewers, Bradley James, says, Great stuff, mate. Could you do a video reacting to a chat GPT generated street fight? Hmm. Or react to street fights from movies? Hey, that's a great idea, Bradley. Uh, most people get ideas about fighting either from mixed martial arts, uh, sport, or movies and TV. Uh, and, and both of those can often lead to some very unrealistic ideas about how violence really goes down. Now this video popped up on my YouTube feed serendipitously and it looks like a good choice to review. Uh, for the record, I have never seen this movie, so uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, mate, can I get two Guinnesses, please? Yeah, hang on a second. Just got to go down and change the barrel. Uh-oh, he's hiding. It must be Rich. something serious. Ron, the Richardsons were unexpectedly engaged, so we're going to look after you. Oh, it's all right. Um, the landlord's going to change the barrel for me, thanks. You don't mind if I pull myself a pint, yeah? <laughs> okay, so it looks like uh, a bunch of guys are going to jump him, and he's keeping a pretty casual, nonchalant attitude. What is that? Yeah, what do you think, Puff? It's a fucking tool. No, it's not. It's a fucking rolling pin. Who are you, Fanny Craddock? What are you going to do with that? You're going to bait me So, uh, I'm sure by now he suspects that these guys are here to jump him, and one of them has some sort of a metal, uh, possibly a lead pipe. Uh, he's standing in pretty close proximity, uh, which <laughs> in any minute that guy can just pull back and swing and hit him in the head, or, or the other guy uh, next to him could just throw a sucker punch and hit him. Um, so as much as there's something to be said for his cool, calm demeanor, uh, he's in a very dangerous spot. He should try to make some space, unless he plans on sucker punching first, which if you're going to do that, uh, don't hesitate. Okay, let's sing me a song, watch me blow out me fucking candles. Oh, here come the pocket guns. So he, he's pulling the ultimate bluff with the pocket guns, which I, I don't know yet, but I'm guessing it's just his fingers. Uh, I guess we'll find out in a minute. I come here for a fucking shootout, right? A proper shootout with some proper men, like Colonel Custer and Geronimo. Have you ever heard of him? No. By the way, is it just me, or is this uh, red-headed fellow on the left look like the illegitimate love child between Canelo Alvarez and uh, David Caruso? Because you were too busy in your penny baking fucking fairy cakes, weren't you? Rich, this lot of fucking nonsense to a man. They're fucking nonsense. Get out of your fucking way. Go on, get out. Go on. Looks like Tom Hardy is playing two different roles. Gangster. One apparently needs glasses. Shoot out, Twin man. brothers. Fucking shoot out! Like a west. Okay, so his bluff worked. It got him to the exit past the guys, so... Very effective bluff. The uh, one problem about maintaining that bluff is he had to keep his fingers, finger guns, which once again, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be finger guns. He had to keep them in his pocket the whole time he walked past. So he was incredibly, incredibly vulnerable to someone throwing a punch or swinging that pipe at him. Wankers, fucking embarrassing. Wasting my time, fucking wasting my time. So this, uh, this, behavior he's taking right now where he's like, oh, you effing wankers, this is a waste of my time. He's trying to elevate his own status. He's trying to break the script that these guys had in their head. They expected him to be like, oh, hey, no, please don't attack me, or maybe to talk trash and stand his ground, or, or to cower and back down. That's typically the script that a group of individuals who are going to jump someone has. Uh, in this particular uh, instance, his bluff and his posturing worked and it allowed him to escape. It is a TV show, but uh, that can sometimes work in real life. You do have to be careful about insulting people. Um, if you insult people, if you insult their ego, they are going to be more likely to want to defend themselves because there's other people watching and can't let their precious egos be hurt. Let's see what happens. I think his brother is still on the bar. Oh, your brother's done a runner. Nah, uh, he's just genuinely disappointed, that's, right, that's all. Look at, Look at that. Full of iron, that is. It takes a while, that does, you know, to settle. Playing cool, calm, and collected in the face of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys who are going to jump him, all of which are wearing 
nice suits and sport jackets, might I add. Cool butterfly collars. This must be the 60s or 70s or something. Well, Charlie Richardson said we're to knock the granny out of you, Reg. Oh, yeah, he knock did. the did granny he? out of him. of him. Right, listen. When you see him next, you tell him for me, yeah, that I say, fuck Charlie, right? And fuck his brother, yeah? And fuck that fat Georgie Cornell that hangs out with him. Fuck your face. Okay, so um, here is probably the worst possible thing that you could do is he has now gotten from uh, a safe distance where someone was going to ha sucker punch him, they would have had to close that gap. He voluntarily closed that gap and then immediately began talking trash. Uh, escalation, 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 here comes a sucker punch. Unless you plan on throwing that sucker punch first, uh, you do not want to close that gap. He's got a guy with a pipe and a guy with some fists standing right next to him. Uh, talking trash, showing a, a, an abundance of confidence. Once again, uh, there's an intimidation factor in showing an abundance of confidence, but when you go and you put yourself in that vulnerable position, uh, that's a bit foolhardy. <laughs> Tom Hardy, foolhardy. <laughs> yeah? Yeah? I fight the fucking lot of you as well. What do you think of that? Hey? You like that? Mm. You won't mind if I fight back, will you? Well, you think you can manage it? <sighs> oh, oh, is this the brother coming back? I wonder what he... Does he have real guns? It's more from your tribe, really, to be honest. I mean, mm. I warn you, I'm not going to fight fair, though. Looks like he has hammers. So I bought these. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I believe it's now going to be seven on two. Uh, the one of the brothers. I like how he's, he's sneaking in. He's going to... He's probably going to come up and try to ambush uh, the guys from behind, which, hey, uh, smart tactic. He's got a couple of hammers. Okay. Make that first swing count. Hit someone so hard that they can't get back up. Look at the way Tom Hardy is <laughs> holding the uh, brass knuckles. You, you don't put them here. You put them here because that's how you... You don't punch like this. You you punch like this. Let's see what happens. All right. Now, before we start, I've got a little joke for you. you love this one. Paranoid schizophrenic. You will <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, he's telling a story. Okay, so classic sucker punch setup. Let me tell you a story. Once there was this guy who, all right, I guarantee that's what's going to happen. Let's find out. We sent him a bar. Yep. <laughs> all right. Okay. Cool. So his brother clocks one guy in the back of the head with a hammer. Brilliant. That guy is probably out of the fight, so it's now six on two. He punched the one guy, it looked like in the throat with the brass knuckles. Brilliant timing um, to do something like in the, this in real life. Very, very smart move. Once again, maintaining that proximity for that long while trash talking. Probably, or it would be very incredibly risky to do. However, that first strike to the throat with brass knuckles, it is probably a five on two uh, fight now. The fact that he then clocked uh, the illegitimate love child of David Caruso and Saul Canelo Alvarez in the jaw with those brass knuckles, he quite possibly broke his jaw, broke some of his teeth. So it might be four on two. There might be some camp people off camera that I can't see. Hammer to the groin. Okay, bottle to the head. Let's talk about a bottle to the head. Um, I obviously, it's, it's way too fast. I can't tell what kind of a bottle that was. Uh, it is pretty common for someone to, to take a bottle, smash it over someone's head, and uh, for it to not break on the initial uh, hit. However, uh, typically with, with rep repeated blows and sometimes on the first blow, the bottle will break. Now, it's nothing like what you see in the movies where you have this, you know, nice little, just the, the, the bottom of the bottle breaks and you have this nice little jagged thing you can use as a knife. Uh, when you break a bottle, it, the whole thing shatters in your hand all the way through, you know, the, the neck of the bottle that you're holding and it'll shatter and cut your hand. So um, just be aware of that if you ever choose to get into a uh, bar fight with seven guys with hammers and you choose to use a bottle. It could break in your hand. Ow. Okay. okay. Biting of the ear. Uh, this is a great fight scene. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's really incredibly violent. Uh, you know. Uh, let's talk about biting. When you bite someone, just imagine you put your teeth on someone, wherever it is, what is their first response going to be? Whoa! They're going to pull away. Uh, he had no sort of uh, form of support. He just went in and 
ah, like he's going in for a Snickers bar or something. Um, you have to support the head if you're going to bite. Here is an example. You think of like a rear naked choke that you could put someone in and now you can get in there and bite and they don't have the ability to pull away. You also have to keep them from being able to move their head around as well. So you have to really, really lock a head in if you're going to bite or eye gouge. Once again, why are, why are we throwing body punches? Um, you need this fight to be over. Go for better targets. But, you know, TV show. Looks more fun when he's like, bop, 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 instead of just bop. <laughs> Bit the ear off, spit it back in his face. Hey, great stuff. Once again, you got to support the head if you're going to bite. <sighs> I literally just made a video on how to headbutt and how not to headbutt, and we just saw a forehead to forehead headbutt. Anyone have any idea what that feels like? Just go find yourself a, uh, a nice concrete wall or, or just go up to like uh, where you know there's a stud in, in your wall and just go up and just headbutt that with your forehead and see what that feels like. And uh, you'll know quickly how not to headbutt. When you headbutt someone, you want to take the forehead and you want to headbutt into their face. You never want to come at it from this angle because what's going to happen is they're going to duck their head and you're going to run your forehead or worse your face right into the top of their head and now you're the one who's been headbutted what you do is you get below them you duck tuck your chin and you come in like a bull and you jump up that's how you headbutt someone oh come on that was clearly forehead to forehead Ow. <laughs> Typical time walking home from this, this fight. Okay. Hey, uh, really fun and entertaining fight scene. I, I think they did a great job. Uh, it, it was a blast to watch. Obviously, this is fiction. And for two guys to win in a scenario like this is possible, but certainly the degree of, of cavalier attitude they had uh, did not match the reality of what that situation would be like if you found yourself there in real life. Uh, there definitely are ways to survive and, and arguably win a scenario like this. Um, and what makes for an entertaining movie and what would work in real life are, are usually not in alignment. Although, as I mentioned, there were uh, a few really good tricks and tactics that they used in, these, in this scene. I, I, think, uh, I think they did some things really good. Folks, there's obviously nothing glamorous about real violence, and uh, we should always avoid it whenever possible. The types of injuries sustained uh, here <laughs> would most likely be life-changing and not for the better. So anyway, Hey, uh, thanks for the suggestion, Bradley. Um, I've got another one coming out soon. Uh, this was actually fun to do, and, and hopefully it was very valuable uh, for people to watch, and, and hopefully I was able to, to get across some really good tactical points for you guys. Gentlemen, remember, uh, you are protectors, and you won't be a very good protector if you don't train and prepare. There is nothing like knowing that you are trained to deal with real violence. It's one of the foundations of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. When you feel secure about your ability to deal with real violence, you have the freedom to pursue all of the other areas of life, like love, friendship, self-actualization, etc., from a more secure standpoint. It gives you the ability to show compassion towards others. Maybe not in the particular scene that these gentlemen found themselves in. Anyway, lest I prattle on, I hope you found something useful out of this format of video. Please let me know in the comment field if there's another fight scene that I should review. Until next time, remember, the more you train, the safer this world becomes. See you next time.